everyone, and good afternoon from America's roller coast Cedar Point here in Sandusky, Ohio. This video, this one's gonna be a doozy. We're gonna go on a full park walkthrough here at Cedar Point. One of the uh, one of the biggest amusement parks in the entire country. Giant. I go by the legend, joined by my wonderful girlfriend Molly. Let's go get our steps in here at Cedar Point. Um, I'm a big fan of Cedar Point. You can see the Gatekeeper roller coaster coming over the front gate there. Uh, I've been coming to Cedar Point pretty regularly since about the year 2000. And I love it. For me, this is one of my favorite amusement parks in the country. As soon as you do enter the park, you do have a couple of rides. On the right over there is going to be the Ocean Motion, the swinging ship attraction. And dead center would be the Carousel, a very classic attraction. Yes. And uh, Cedar Point, if you couldn't tell, is uh, over 150 years old now. We're in their, their fourth <laughs> season with that sign celebrating 150 years. Right now it's 153, I think? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the big blue roller coaster, we'll get to that in a little bit. That is Gatekeeper, the wing roller coaster. Oh. On the right over here, it's going to be the, their, I think it's their biggest gift shop, the Point Plaza. Not going to be my favorite gift shop because I really like when they have the uh, lots of coaster stuff. And that one's a lot of Cedar Point stuff, a lot of Snoopy stuff. You got a uh, funnel cake stand and beignets. Very pretty, like, a garden area. Yes, right here on the main windowway, lots of well landscaped areas. On the left, that's gonna be the Jack Aldridge Cedar. And now a lot of times, we're here very early in the season. We're here in like the first week, Cedar Point is open for the year, and there's no shows running. That one tends to do like more of a Broadway style show. I believe it is the biggest theater in the park. Starbucks, very important. Yep, makes sense having that right in the front. Yeah. Starbucks, not really a local tradition, but what is is the next building, that big blue barn. That is Toft's Ice Cream. And that is a, a big deal here in the Ohio area. I don't think I've ever had tops. Oh, yeah. there's, a, there's a cow out front. Okay. Now, a store I do enjoy is this one here underneath the Skyride. The Skyride will take you all the way down the main midway over towards Corkscrew. Now, this shop here, I'm just going to cut through real quick. This one will have a lot of really cool roller coaster stuff. Um, generally, somewhere where I will spend some money. They've got fat heads and t-shirts from Made to Thrill and other artists. I do like that they also have some uh, some stuff you can hang on your wall. Pendants and signs. Yeah, I like the signs, but I, they just they wouldn't fit anywhere in our house. Like no. I like the corkscrew one. I like the Gemini one. Uh, lots of good merchandise in this store here. Over here on our left, with the big long line coming out of it, that is Yugo's. It is a quick service Italian restaurant. If you are on the dining plan or dining pass, your your meal would work in there. One thing with that one that is nice, it's one of the few restaurants with indoor dining. And in the summer, you need that. Exactly. Or, you know, it, it rains, it gets hot. So having indoor dining is important. I don't think I've ever been on the Sky Ride either here. Really? Yeah, I don't think we've ever done it. We've always walked from Midway. Yeah, yeah. It's a, the Sky Ride tends to be busy in the morning from one station and at the end of the day at the other station. That makes sense because it's a long way down. Yeah. All right, over here on your left, that is going to be Raptor, the big inverted roller coaster built in the early 90s. A very good ride. This one tends to have a pretty decent sized line all day. Not one of my favorite inverted roller coasters, but also not one of my least favorite inverted roller coasters. It's just mid -rise. Yeah, but it's a good ride. All right, here you can see the giant map of Cedar Point. And how big it is. Yes, we've gone, right here. <laughs> we've gone from here to there. Now here's a little bit of the path I'm gonna take you guys on. We're gonna turn right, go through Kitty Kingdom, past the new boardwalk, through Planet Snoopy, and then we're gonna cross over in the Val Raven Plaza, and then go up the main midway, past the closed Top Thrill Dragster, through Camp Snoopy, into Frontier Town, down the Frontier Trail, and end over by Millennium Force and Rougarou. It's a long walk. Yeah, we are getting our steps in. We are. Over here on the right side, this is going to be where you would find most of the Midway games here at Cedar Point. Uh, pretty impressive. It seems like most of them are operating. You're a big Midway game person. I, I am. Uh, I, you know, I, I always like to see the, the different types of games that they have and the prizes you could win. Like, I've got to zoom in over here. You can win a Kool-Aid Man? Kool-Aid Man. Oh, yeah. I like the penguin that has a Cedar Point shirt. Yep, see? Step right up. I can guess your age, weight, or birth month, and if you fall outside my margin of error, you, you get a win prize. That. Look at that. You could 
become Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Lots and lots of games. Indeed. Also, a big thing at Cedar Point is going to be for snacks, the fresh cut fries. And there are a, a couple different places around the park where you can get the fresh cut fries. Uh, we are recording this video on, I think it's Friday, May 12th. So uh, the park just opened for the season last weekend. And uh, it was way more busy than I thought it would be on a Friday. It's um, definitely a lot of school groups with yeah. science and music and groups. Yes. The sort of the, uh, hey, let's find any excuse to take a field trip to Cedar Point. It's an end of school year. Yeah, that's true, it. yeah. <laughs> Cedar Point has three different kids areas. The oldest and most classes of which is going to be this one over here on the right, known as Kitty Kingdom. Um, I've never been a big fan of this area. It feels... A little tacky for me. It's a little dated. It definitely a feels lot dated, dated, I think. <laughs> but then I, I guess you could probably see the appeal of something like this, where as the Cedar Point's a very old park, Kitty Kingdom. These rides are old as dirt, so you probably have like generations after generations riding these rides. Exactly, like the grandfather that took his son, and like multiple generations riding these attractions here. And I also like how they have so many kids' lands so that a parent can go ride a roller coaster while the kids have something to do. Yeah. Um, starting up over here is going to be one of the better flat rides at Cedar Point, and that is Max Air. It's going to be this giant Huss Frisbee style ride. Those are fun. Yeah, I like these rides a lot. I also like the color scheme on Max Air here. I think it's got a really fun color scheme. It's a big ride. It is. You don't get too dizzy though. I'm not a no. one that's spinning. It looks like you spin, but it's not that bad. Yeah, as far as dizziness goes. Yeah, dizziness. It's a fun ride. Yeah. And there they go. Like over a hundred feet in the air. I don't like the ones that like completely flip. I can't no. and that one does not. And while this may be Kitty Kingdom this section of the park we're wandering back into. There are some full-size adult rides. Like that's a very, a very normal size carousel where you could ride giant rabbits. <laughs> and as we make our way this way, you could see they do a pretty much a full-size bumper car as well over here. Kind of a weird spot for it. Bumper cars technically uh, doesn't not too bad of a line right now. Probably two to three cycles to yeah, get on that. Not bad. And you get some more of these uh, classic Kitty Kingdom type rides. Now, after we get past the bumper cars, we're going to end up in the newest section of Cedar Point, and that's something that opened this year here in 2023, uh, just last week actually, and that is the Boardwalk. Now, a bunch of these rides have been here before, but there is some new stuff. See the Calypso over there, a, a pretty fun flat ride. Uh, got renamed, used to be Tiki Twirl and Calypso. I think it's changed names a bunch of different times. Has it? Yeah. <laughs> You've got the giant wheel, which is awesome, but I think they load about eight cars on it. Yeah, that's a long line. Yeah, so it's like, it's something I would love to ride. You get great pictures, great views, but like, it just, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, it is an old ride. It's in at least the second location in the park. But it's beautiful with the views and everything. Oh, yeah. The theme park, and then you have the bay. Mm -hmm. Over here, another fun flat ride, a very classic, the Troika, Troika, Troika. And if you didn't want to go on Max Air, you would get in line right over here. Now we we're talking about Gatekeeper right as we came into the park, and the entrance to Gatekeeper is going to be over here. I think it's a good ride uh, for an entrance. Like it has a beautiful entrance yeah, when you first it, enter. It's very, very With smooth. Those, like keyholes. Yep. We also got some food stands over here on the right. Also, even if you don't want to go on Gatekeeper, go in the gift shop. The gift shop, I believe, still has the old robot from Disaster Transport in there. Mm. Or at least it did last year. I haven't, I haven't been in there this year yet. 
Now this usually has long lines in the morning, right? Yeah, like right when the park opens, but it does have a uh, one of the better capacities for a roller coaster here at Cedar Point. So even if you're here on a busy day, especially if you hit it in the afternoon, you should be pretty good. It's a fun little wing coaster, very smooth. Yeah, very, very smooth. Um, some of the roller coasters here at Cedar Point get very intense. Yes. That one, not so much. Yes. Good family ride. Yep, and uh, this is the boardwalk section of the park because you are right on Lake Erie here at Cedar Point. And you can see that right over there. Outside the park, there is a boardwalk area where you could walk around the water. And if you want to go in the beach and go in the water, you can do that. Now, I think the most expensive thing they built this off season was this restaurant and bar here. This is known as the Grand Pavilion. It is big, it is fancy looking. It's really pretty inside. Yeah, we had, uh, we had lunch in there. Mm -hmm. uh, the pork tenderloin was just okay. The pineapple fried rice, fantastic. And the bread was really good with the butter. Yeah. Um, Cedar Point, if you're gonna be here all day, they do offer an all day dining pass. So you can eat every 90 minutes for like $35. And they got some pretty good food here at Cedar Point. And this is the other indoor location. Yes, for food. Grand Pavilion and Yugo, so the indoor locations. Now, Molly, I think we gotta go look up, see what this bar looks like, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, it really shouldn't come as any surprise that we like the new bar here at Cedar Point. Yes. Um, first of all, these, these chairs. Oh my goodness. Look this at This is the chair that you wanna sit in. Absolutely. Especially if you're here for like a good 12, 14 hour day at Cedar Point. In the hot summer day. You come in here, have a couple beers for an hour and just have a break. That was always my problem with Cedar Point. There wasn't that many places to relax indoors. Yeah. Now they have one. I love their liquor rack in the shape of a roller coaster. They got 18 beers on draft in here. A good mix. Yeah, between like normal kind of stuff and then really nice local craft beer. I love how the TVs look like they are in picture frames. Mm -hmm. Molly, what are we drinking? It's weird. We're drinking a uh, red cream. A hard or, seltzer. Yep. By, I guess, I think it's local. Astra or something like mm -hmm. that. And then one last thing I wanted to show you while we're up here in this bar area before we continue the walkthrough is they have patios on the outside on the second level. And this one's really nice because you look overlook Lake Erie. And uh, man, it's uh, all of a sudden you come out on this patio and you look this way and you, you don't really feel like you're in the amusement park anymore until you, you turn left. But uh, this is very pleasant. You got the beach. Very nice. Yeah. All right, let's get back to that park walkthrough. On the lower level of the Grand Pavilion, you do have that quick service restaurant. And I love their rotisserie machines. Mesmerizing. Moving on from that lovely, lovely, lovely bar, heading towards the new roller coaster for this year. This year, Cedar Point did add a new roller coaster, a new wild mouse, sort of a throwback to an old roller coaster they had here a while ago. And it's actually a new design from Zamperla. It is a spinning wild mouse. Really I thought it, spacious. Yeah. The cars, really spacious. Very comfortable cars. Oh, there goes the cheese car. So there's seven different cars on this roller coaster. Six are done up like mice. And they all have different names yep. and faces. One is a wheel of cheese. Supposedly this cheese car does spin the fastest. Yeah, fun fact. Yeah, but it's a, it's a very smooth roller coaster. It's fast, spinny, thumbs up. But you know, obviously with only four people per train, it doesn't have the best capacity of rides here at Cedar Point. It's also the new ride. So it gets long lines, it gets slow lines. Now, if you are staying in the Cedar Point Hotel or you do have a platinum pass, you can come for early entry and this is one of the early entry rides. And it says the line may close early. Yep. And there are the mice themselves. Look at Larry. Yeah, Larry is probably our favorite mouse. And then Dizzy. We rode Chase. Yeah, we rode in Chase, but this is um, this is very cute. I also like the cat, like the cartoon comic cat at the top of the lift hill. It does have music, which I think would drive the ride off insane. Yes. Because it's not a big loop at all. No, as it like goes up the lift hill, it plays like 20 seconds of a cartoony song. Now, it's a good addition to the I park. think so, and the park really needed more roller coasters in between those that can be found in Camp Snoopy and, you know, your, your Iron Dragons and yeah. your Blue Streaks. Your family, any generation. Yeah. 
Now the Cedar Point did move a couple of rides this year. The Matterhorn and the Scrambler moved from over by Corkscrew to over here in the new boardwalk section. I believe they also got some paint job and refurbishments because they do look better. Uh, one of my favorite midway games to watch is straight ahead of us. That is the three-point shootout where you get to play just like you're at uh, NBA All-Star Saturday night. We saw someone do really well. Yeah, we saw somebody get, I think, five or six. Yeah. And also with the new area comes all the wonderful new landscaping. Now, if you're curious what was in this space before, this was where Wicked Twister and the old Oceana Stadium was. I was never a big fan of uh, Wicked Twister. I liked Wicked Twister. But I feel like uh, the Wild Mouse, I don't know. Wild Mouse, is, it's, it's going to be very popular to be here for a long time. It will be. But it's always going to have that capacity issue. Now, a couple of rides over here. There's what the Scrambler got moved to this spot right here. Behind the Scrambler is Windseeker. It's a 300 foot tall gentle tower ride. And I like Windseeker. It gives you some of the best views here at Cedar Point. It does move sometimes though, right, with the wind? Yeah, it sways a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, this beer truck isn't open today. And there's also a gate over here to get out towards the beach and the hotel. Now we're gonna head through, uh, I believe this is Planet Snoopy, the second kids area here at the park. This one is not operating today. Um, if you come to Cedar Point either in September, October, or before Memorial Day in May, everything might not be running just because it's a very big park and staffing's an issue. And also they've got two other kids areas, so. Yeah. But there's a kids bumper cars. Kids bumper cars are always adorable. Yes, they are. Now I believe this is something that opened, I think back in 2008 or 2009, 2010, somewhere in that range. And I believe a bunch of these rides came from the old Geauga Lake that was also in Ohio. I love the Woodstock on this train. Yeah, that is cute. That is very cute. And you got the submarine. Yeah, a whole bunch of uh, very space themed rides. And you have this waterfall. This waterfall has been here for a long time. Again, I, I'm, I know a lot about Cedar Point. I don't know everything about Cedar Point. I believe this waterfall might date all the way back to when this was a uh, Berenstein Bears country. That would make sense. Yep. With like the wood paneling like right there. Yeah. You got the kite eating tree. That little tiny railroad. Now I'm going to head this way because my favorite place to eat at Cedar Point is that right there. Melt bar and grilled. Melt is a gourmet grilled cheese full service restaurant. And it has a lot of like history and stuff in Yeah, a lot the... of cool Cedar Point stuff, like history stuff in there. And, uh, and I a... love cheese, so oh, that's a really the sandwiches great are good. Place. And also, if you're here all day and you only want to eat one meal, the Melt sandwiches are massive. They are, they're really big, but it's not on the dining plan. No, like we're doing a dining plan visit today. So we are, we are obviously, are, I think Melt's not even open. I think that opens around Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, I think it does too. But really good restaurant, highly recommend. Oh yeah. I mean, it is a local chain. You can find other ones here in the, uh, in the Cleveland, Toledo area. Mm -hmm. Which we've eaten at. Yep. Uh, it's nice when you go to the, uh, some of the ones that aren't at Cedar Point because then you can get like half sandwiches, mm -hmm. which are more than enough because it's a big meal, but I do enjoy Melt. And you like looking at all the vintage stuff. Oh yeah, as a big dork, I gotta, gotta see all that stuff. You have there, airbrush, a payroll. Yep. Uh, this building over here, I know it's been there for a long time. That is used during Halloween time as a haunted house. It was a good haunted house. Yeah, we, we had to Cedar Point on Halloween's last year. That was a good haunted house. Yeah. Scary. It was the new one, right? I think I so, think yeah, one of two new ones. One of two new ones. It was really good. Mm -hmm. Right in front of us, you can see getting ready to drop off the lift hill. That is Val Raven, the park's B&M dive coaster. Not my favorite dive coaster. No. But I like how they have a dive coaster. Yeah, another one that I think is on the gentler side as yeah. well. So if you got some people that are freaked out by more intense rides, while this one does look intimidating, you know, 200 feet tall, straight down drop, it isn't overly wild. No. Which feels weird to say. Uh, Val Raven also uh, 
tends to get some of the longer lines in the park as it, it doesn't have terribly good capacity. It's right in the front. It's very eye-catching. Uh, still relatively new as well. I think for me, the best part of Val Raven is the views you get from the top. Like going up the top and then curling around that corner, you get just awesome, awesome views of the lake, all the other roller coasters that are here at the park. She doesn't know yet. I don't think now, Cedar Point is a park that does have a lot of different entrances. One's going to be over here. This is known as either the Val Raven Gate or the Marina Gate. On my left is going to be an Antique Autos ride. I do like on the Antique Autos, they have uh, some like classic signage that is all nods to other roller coasters in the park, like Maverick or Magnum Hyperfuel. I do like the antique cars in each uh, theme park. <laughs> yeah. Look at the big old drop there on Val Raven. Yeah, but this is going to be one of the entrances. Um, some people do come to Cedar Point by a boat, as there is a marina over there. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, there's also, I believe there's a stop over there for the Jet Express. So if you wanted to go from Cedar Point over to Putin Bay, which is a, a great little party town, little party island, you could do so. It's a lot of drinks. Lot well, of that, that's how uh, we put in bathe yeah. on our one visit. <laughs> I want to go back. We, have, we haven't been there in a number of years. I'm going to show you guys the good view of Val Raven going down the drop here. If you haven't been on one of these before, they do hold you. Like there, they'll hang you over the side. And that's the scariest part. Yeah. But like you said, it is actually pretty gentle. Screaming right past us. Bye. And we'll mosey on this way. Now we're kind of heading back towards the entrance. Yes. In a way. See Raptor going. I agree. Raptor's not like my favorite one of those. No, I, I much prefer um, Montu, Alpengeist, Nemesis. Banshee, yeah. uh, Afterburner Carowinds. We haven't ruined it this time, but... No. Maybe later. Maybe. We've got a while. We've parked in close for another six hours today. Mm -hmm. And this is the entrance to Val Raven with a big shiny sign. And there you can see the lift. I do like how they have test seats in front of all their coaches. Yes, because some of them, especially uh, like Millennium Force and and Steel Vengeance, you know, uh, people do end up walk up shaming those because their uh, their body proportions don't fit. Yes. Val Raven also has a sizable gift shop. Now, one thing I, I recommend you do not do: don't if you can avoid it, don't bring a bag to Cedar Point. A lot of the rides, they don't let you bring your bag on with you when there's no like bins, so you have to rent a locker and pay for it. And so if you can avoid it, avoid it. Or if you have someone that doesn't do coasters. Yep, buy them a beer. <laughs> let them hold all let the them bags. Hold the bags. <laughs> on the right over here, I think it's the oldest roller coaster at Cedar Point and the only wooden roller coaster out of the 18 that are here at Cedar Point, and that is the Blue Streak. I feel like it's been a long time since I've ridden that. I know. I rode it last year. I don't know if you rode it last year or not. I don't remember. Um, solid ride. You know, a Blue Streak's a good example of like how how far roller coasters have come. Like when you look at the older roller coasters in the park, it's you know kind of small. It looks like that, but still a fun ride. Also, I feel like lines for Blue Streak doesn't get too bad. No, no, that's true. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're a fan of old school Cedar Point, this building right here, that used to be where the pirate ride was. A pirate ride? It was a dark ride. Oh. Yep. Uh, now it is used in the fall time for like a kid's haunted house. It was really cute. Yeah, it's really adorable. Over here on the right is Chickie and Pete's, which is a sports bar. Raptor's very loud. I'm not going to fight Raptor. <laughs> so tasty. Really good. I believe Chicken and Pizza is another one that will only operate that main season from like Memorial Day to Labor Day. Which is a bit of a bummer because that is on the dining plan and you could get like boneless wings and Philly cheesesteaks in there. And now we're heading 
back to the Midway. Yep. That is a very loud coaster. Yeah, it's a very loud roller coaster. Now we're gonna head up the main midway, but I did have to stop and show you something very special here at Cedar Point. <laughs> As in this pathway here, right in the middle of the main midway, um, a couple of years ago, you could buy your brick and like, like commemorate your family's visit or anything of that nature. Well, myself and the guys at In The Loop, we bought one. You look at the big things over there, you go kind of diagonal, you get right there and see the In The Loop brick. Got a little couple inside jokes from the podcast and the YouTube channel. But yep, uh, the In The Loop brick, it's here, it's still here. And uh, something I visit every time. I wonder how many people come and visit it. I and think see I... that, and they're like, "What in the heck?" Yep, probably. What quite does a... that mean? Zebra, zebra, large zebra landscape. Mm. <laughs> Rangers booty shorts. Yep. Like, it would have confused a lot of people if you don't know the inside jokes. Indeed. <laughs> Over here on the left, quick service food restaurant, the Corral. They've got ham breaded chicken tenders, and they are very tasty. On the right, this big old building, that is the Coliseum Arcade. That's another good one. If it is an inclement weather, it is a giant arcade in there. You also love the arcades. I do love arcades, and they have so many games. Oh my goodness, this is a, this is a very long line for chicken tenders. So uh, yeah, if there's bad weather. Oh no, Cedar Downs isn't working. We're coming up to one of my favorite rides. No. Um, Cedar Downs is a, a very old time, like obviously Cedar Point's an old park. Raptor is still very loud. Cedar Downs is a kind of a fast carousel. Um, these horses move at a pretty good clip. They move back and forth, so you kind of race your buddies. So you... Yeah, they don't move up and down, they move back and forth. Yeah, using those things there. Yeah. And they play like old timey kind of uh, horse racing announcements on it. Uh, there aren't many of these. I know there's one at Rye Playland. I know there's one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And uh, this one here at Cedar Point. This one's my favorite, one of my favorite rides and it's uh, always a much must do whenever I'm here. Yep. Also a ride that is undercover in case of inclement weather. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, the Coliseum Arcade. Uh, there was rain in the forecast today. I think we're gonna escape it, but that was part of my plan, you know? <laughs> and uh, that's one thing with Cedar Point. If there is bad weather, they don't have any indoor rides. No, they don't. They have no indoor rides, and they have some shows if you're here in the main season, but it's not a great park if you're in here for a, on a bad weather day. You know, I, I think they could use a dark ride, a flying theater, an indoor roller coaster to help water per, weatherproof park. I think all parks need it. Oh, yeah. On the left over here, that's where you would get in line if you want to ride the antique cars. Uh, pretty busy day here at Cedar Point. That is not a long line at all. No. Like that is probably four or five minutes. That's candy shop. Candy shop and the peanuts gift shop. Now one of your favorite gift shops is... Oh. Yeah. The Pagoda is another one that will have a lot of good ride merchandise. It's a lot of... Um... A lot of retro stuff yes, too. Yeah, that's the word that I was looking for. So if you like uh, any ride that existed at some point in Cedar Point's history, they might have a t-shirt for it. Anything from the Frontier lifts to any of the old roller coasters. Yeah. I almost said antique and I was like, that's not the word I was No. It's retro. Yeah. Which is really your style. Oh yeah. You They've got a lot, of, a lot of good t-shirts from uh, Homage in there. Mm -hmm. um, this is a new shop. I believe this opened during the 150th celebration. And it's the button shop. If you want a Cedar Point souvenir and you don't want to spend a lot of money, Good place to come, as they have tons and tons of buttons for only a dollar fifty each. A lot of different rides, logos. Yeah, all sorts of stuff Everything. from, like, there's all different series of them. Like this one is all eight bit ride logos. And it, I think they change. Um, yeah, every year they come out with new yeah. stuff. You could get every car on the Wild Mouse as a button. I like this. They have the old timey ride signs. That you can see some of them in the, the Melt restaurant. They have those as buttons, and they're only a dollar fifty. So, pretty good, pretty good deal. Yeah. And now we're getting to 
to the end of the midway. Yeah, that main midway. And then it kind of forks left or forks right. Yes. Depending on which way you want to go. And this is where the skyline goes. Yep. So it just goes from the front to here. To the end. Which is nice during the summer because this is not covered and it, no shade. Yep. And it gets very hot. Over here on the right, you can see where the Matterhorn and the Scrambler used to be. They didn't do a whole lot with this space. Um, just kind of uh, made it more open. And now we're going to the right? Yeah, we're going to go to the right. Past what might be my least favorite roller coaster at Cedar Point. It's definitely my least favorite. Corkscrew. Yep. Um, also want to mention that they do have a lot of these Coca-Cola refresh stations all around the park. Uh, you can buy a wristband to get all the soda you can drink all day long, or you can get that included with your annual pass. Um, they'll give you the option of getting a cup or the uh, souvenir bottle. I recommend getting the cup because like a bag, that souvenir cup, you would have to pay for it to put it in a locker every time. I do love how the corkscrew goes over kind of the midway. Yeah, I, corkscrew looks great. Yeah. Rides terribly. <laughs> I think the first time I rode corkscrew, I got off and I was like, I need ty Tylenol, I got a headache. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's still here. It helps the Tylenol sales in the park. <laughs> but if they ever do get rid of it. I, I wouldn't be surprised would if they this. keep the yeah. corkscrews or whatever ride would replace it that that would have a similar element. Yeah. You see people going up the power tower, a 300 foot tall drop tower. Uh, there are four different towers on there, two of which will do that. What they're doing there is to take you up nice and slow and then blast you down. The other two, the two I like better, you'll sit at the bottom and they'll blast you all the way to the top really fast and then blast you back down. That That's always the worst part for me of a drop tower. When you wait at the top right there, before dropping down. I do like how they have the different options. Yeah, again, you know, it it's smart. It makes them more re re yep. There's more corkscrew. Oh. <laughs> I don't even, it might not even be running today. I haven't seen it go. No. Over on the left, you can see Iron Dragon going. That's a unique ride, right? Yeah, there are, there are not too many of those left in the country. Uh, Kings Island has one and Six Flags Magic Mountain has one. That's about it. There's one in Canada's Wonderland in a different country. Is it also a gentle family type ride? Yes. That's another one. If you guys, like, I think that's probably the first roller coaster I would take people, like if you have little kids, once they outgrow the ones in Camp Snoopy, that would be the first one I would take them on. Not a corkscrew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes the pain. Here it comes. Look at all these people having a great time on corkscrew. It does look really, really yeah. great though. <laughs> How it goes over the walkway. But man, it is such a shitty ride. Yeah, nope. <laughs> no, thank you. The thing with Corkscrew is it doesn't take up much room. Yeah. So if they were to like a remove a ride like Corkscrew, I'm not sure how much you could put in its place. And I'm assuming there's a lot of people who, again, came here and that was their first Yeah. Culture. Was that one of their original? Um, I believe it's it, late 70s, early 80s, something in there. So it's been here for a while, yeah. Yep. And I think the gift shop said it was like the world's first triple looping roller coaster. Okay, so then, yeah, I don't feel like that's going anywhere. And you probably have a lot of generations that want to take their, their kids on it. And have I don't know, but it's, it's also bad. <laughs> It's a bad ride. <laughs> it's a bad ride. Now, unfortunately, I'm trying to find a positive. No, it looks. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't. <laughs> All right. Now, if you've been to Cedar Point before, you know exactly what was over here on the left-hand side. Uh, this is Top Thrill Dragster. Uh, opened back in 2003, 2004, something like that, as the world's tallest and fastest roller coaster. Uh, lost that record to King Kong, New Jersey. Uh, unfortunately, back in 2020, it had a very bad accident. Um, it, it was plagued with downtime for years. Um, does have a gift shop though? Gift shop still open, sells lots of roller coaster stuff. In uh, Advil, because that's where I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> if you make the mistake of riding Corkscrew, you buy your Advil. But Cedar Point, the park did announce that Cedar Point, uh, not Cedar Point, uh, Top Thrill Dragster is permanently closed. 
but they are just reinventing Top Thrill Dragster. As you can see, the tower is still there. The tower is really not going to go anywhere. So uh, the big belief is what they're doing. It's going to be a Zamperla project. And instead of launching once and going up and over, it's going to launch you forward. You're going to go up a little bit. You're going to come backwards, get launched again, go up a big old spike that they got the footer cord for over there by Iron Dragon. Go up a big old spike, probably 300 feet or so, and then come back down, launch again, and then go over the top hat. So kind of like Pantheon and yeah. Busch Gardens Williamsburg? Except twice as tall. Yeah. Um, Which is kind of good because it would be a longer ride, wouldn't it? It will be, but I don't think it's going to be a better ride. The best part of Dragster was that crazy launch, and now you're not going to have the crazy launch. Now, would rollback still be a thing with that Well, crazy? it's going to roll back on every, every, every oh, time. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah. That's good, at least. But it, it, it's, it's not the same. <laughs> Super Himalaya over on the right. But yeah, I, I'm I'm happy that Dragster isn't going away. Yeah. And I, I, you know, we don't know. This is not a project they've officially announced it. That is what I was talking about there was the, the, the popular speculation. Look how many people are lined for Corkscrew. Why? See? See? Why? I told you some people had to like it. Well, it's because there's not much over here with Dragster clothes. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. <laughs> Um, yeah, and one thing I'll be interested to see is if they are adding, like, whether they'll add some airtime hills, like how Pantheon's got in, in their launch, or uh, Pipeline, which I rode yesterday at SeaWorld Orlando. They have an airtime hill in their launch, and that then, if I think it has an airtime hill, maybe two airtime hills, then we could be talking, like, okay, maybe this is a better ride than the old ride. Now, would the capacity get better then, or would it get I worse? I think the capacity's going to get worse. I think they're going to be smaller trains. Uh. That's a shame. Yes. But they haven't officially announced anything. No, I mean, normally Cedar Point announces their new projects in around August or September. So uh, probably won't be too much longer. Okay. And I mean, this is something that has been under construction. We were here in September of last year and they were already tearing up the track. So this is uh, definitely a project that is very far along. And it's kind of needed with this section of the park. Yeah, and so even, going even, on. Yeah, as you can tell, we're getting, uh, oh, what are we going to talk about here? Oh, <laughs> uh, we got trees! Uh, Landscaping. Yeah, but I will say, besides the accident, Dragster, throughout the course of its life, had major reliability issues and suffered from tons and tons of downtime. Mm-hmm. It did. Now, so, that's a hotel, correct? The yes, that's Hotel Breakers. Uh, Cedar Point's on-site hotel. They'll have a couple other ones. But this is the only one that'll be like next to the park. And you get early entry? You get early entry and um, there's there's pools and a couple of nice bars over there. Yep. You're also right on the beach. You get either like a beach view or you could get a park view. And it would be cool looking out your window and seeing, you know, the 400 foot top row dragster tower. Or whatever they'll call it now. Oh, it's definitely getting a new name. <laughs> yeah, I would assume so. You can also see over there where the track has been removed. Oh yeah, look at that. No track. I took a quick break to rest my arm. <laughs> as we continue towards the tower from Top Pro Dragster. Now I believe this building over here with the billboards on it, that was where um, the hydraulic motors would be for Top Pro Dragster. Oh. Obviously okay. the new one will not use, it's going to use I believe LSMs to launch it. So I'm not sure if they'll do anything with this building. It'll probably just be storage for other maintenance kind of processes. Yeah, I wouldn't think it was a guest area. No. It is giant. <laughs> yep, uh, 420 feet tall. And it's a shame because it's such an iconic, like when you drive into Cedar Point. Yeah, it's the, 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 the thing, thing that catches you, your eye. Yeah. So, hopefully it will open up. Well, it's definitely going to open like next year. Right. Hopefully it will be a good ride. Yeah. And then you have brush trims, of course. Very yep. important. And on the right over here will be the entrance to one of the most classic roller coasters here at Cedar Point, the Magnum XL200. This is a roller coaster that I feel is uh, very decisive. Like there's a, there's a lot of people that love Magnum. There's a lot of people that hate Magnum. I am kind of in the middle. I'm like, it's fun. Not one of my favorite rides here. Uh, some of the airtime is great, but it's also a little painful. Yeah, but Drew disagrees with that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of Drew the Interns. It's one of his favorite coasters in the entire world. Uh, it was the original hyper coaster built back in 1989. It does go out by the beach. 
Isn't there a certain seat that you're supposed to ride in or something? A, a lot of people little... would say uh, row three. Row three. Uh, Drew. Like more airtime? Yeah. Drew, who's the big Magnum fanboy, says ride in the last row. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Um, one thing I love about Magnum, it kind of goes really outside the berm of Cedar Point and goes right towards the beach. Yeah. See coming down the drop there? Good visual, visuals. Yeah. Over here, there is yet another entrance to Cedar Point. This is the one that's going to be closest to the Hotel Breakers. And this is also how you would get over to the water park. Uh, Cedar Point Shores is a separately gated water park. Um, a little on the outdated side, they have some modern slides, but a lot of older stuff. I have never been there. They do have a swim up bar, so I've always thought about going. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm talking we have not gone. I know. <laughs> Like, I don't need to do any of the slides. I would go sit in a swim <laughs> bar for two hours in July. That'd be great. And barbecue? Yep. Backbeat Q is a barbecue restaurant. Another good one if you have the dining plan. They have a lot of different options. Outdoor seating. Yeah. And something that's cool about Backbeat Q is you could hear a lot of times they'll have live music. That is really nice. Yeah. And a uh, bar. They do have a bar, but that, that draft list, that is not like in the inside bar. No, no, not in. Michelob Ultra, Stella Artois, and Yingling. Pretty good sized band over there on the And that's something I do like, that they do have live music at Cedar Point and live entertainment on the Midway. So me and Molly, we're gonna go left, but there are a bunch of flat rides if you were to go straight. You've got the Monster, Pipe Scream, and the Flying Scooters. Kids area. Yes. The last one? This is the last kids area. They sound good. They do. We are now wandering into Camp Snoopy, the third and final kids area. This is also my favorite. I think it's the coolest. Well, I love the theming level over here. Also, an attraction that is not open on our visit today is Snake River Expedition. And this is a very interesting ride. It is kind of like a pontoon boat ride with actors on it, and you go past animatronics. It's very interesting. This is another one. I think it'll run Memorial Day till Labor Day. And it's a, um, a very family friendly ride. And it's weird, it's a weird ride. There you can see Snoopy and- I really love that sign. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I do like how they have so many different kids areas. Yeah. It spreads it out. It's good for the parents and the kids. Yeah. I mean, most theme parks have one kids area. Mm -hmm. They have three here. Yeah. Like it'll be hard to find a park in the country with more kids rides than Cedar Point. And I think it's great for uh, a big families or families with a uh, huge age difference for kids. Yep. Do get um, some pretty good views of Millennium Force over here as well. That's the big blue roller coaster. And some of these rides, since there's not too many kids rides out there, they do repeat. So uh, I believe this was the kite eating tree over in Planet Snoopy. Well here, it's Woodstock's Airmail. And that I think was a spaceship over there. Uh, I think it was a... Or a submarine? Okay. Thanks. You do have a classic tilt-a-whirl over here. I like the, the coloring on it. Very like classic peanuts coloring. Mm -hmm. And again, that's not really like, you go on the tilt-a-whirl without kids. It's not an embarrassing ride. Snoopy's Red Baron airplanes. Yep, me and Zach have gone on a tilt -a plenty of tilt-a-whirls. Yep. Just us. I think that's normally at a fun spot in Orlando after a couple of drinks. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Uh, Camp way. Snoopy is also where you will find the kids' roller coasters. Uh, the larger of which will be the Woodstock Express. And that is one adults can ride. That's what I was about to say. Yep. And over here on the right is the smallest roller coaster at Cedar Point, Wilderness Run. And this one, you need a child to ride. Wah, wah, wah. I love Snoopy's mailbox here. <laughs> yeah, and this is where they'll do some uh, character meet and greets as well. This I like. I love this photo op. Yeah, that, that's a really great. Mm -hmm. There's a better view of the Woodstock Express roller coaster going over there. 
This is another one, much like the train up front that has Woodstock in a really cool pose. It is a cute train. Yeah. There it goes. And there it goes. Last ride over here in Camp Snoopy before we head out. That is going to be little race cars and the little kids whip style ride. Oh my god, this is Woodstock. Now we're back on the main like Yep, ride. the main stride. I believe it's like the Gemini Midway it's commonly referred to. Okay, that makes sense. You can see Pipe Scream there. That's a uh, another one of the flat rides I really like at Cedar Point. I don't know if it's operating today or not, but it'll go along that track back and forth. And since this is Gemini Midway, there is Gemini. I like Gemini. Yeah. I think that's a good coaster. I agree. It is a, uh, a racing coaster. While it looks like a wood coaster, it's actually a steel coaster. Really feels like a mine train on steroids. Uh, can be a little rough in parts. There it goes. But yeah, it's a good ride. Also, if they are running both stations, it's got pretty good capacity. I believe today they are only running the red side. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. No, it's a really good ride, especially uh, with the racing. Yeah. Over here on the left, you've got the Happy Fryer, which is, um, I think, the most popular spot to get those fresh cut fries. And this is where you could get the Parmesan fries. Oh, yeah. They are so, so cool. good. Those are good. And there you can see the station for Gemini. Yeah, it looks like they are running two trains on the red side today. So it does have a little bit of a line. That's one I hope to get on later. Yeah. Another uh, refill station. Yep. So if you're going to hold your camera and walk around the park for an hour and a half, <laughs> <laughs> you get something to wet your whistle with. Now there's one upcharge ride at Cedar Point, and it's getting to go right now. There it goes. The slingshot. I would never be able to do one of these. No. You almost got me on one. I did. You have famously said if you ever rode one of these, you would poop your pants. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. I, no, no. It looks terrifying. Yep. And this is, uh, if you want to ride this, it is $20 a person. Oh, and there it is, off in the distance. You can see Steel Vengeance going. Your favorite ride. My favorite roller coaster I have ever been on. Out of 800? 811. 811. It's a really good ride. Oh man, that is, uh, it is great. I, we rode that, that was our uh, fourth road ride we rode this morning. And uh, it's always interesting to ride like your favorite roller coaster after you ride other stuff that's new and cool and interesting to see like, okay, is this still gonna be my favorite? Crossing over these chain tracks here, we are now entering Frontier Town. Definitely ride it. Because oh, yeah. you go through what's called Boneville. Yes, that's the one you get to the train. Yes. I like this area. That's a good place to chill out. Yes. Rocking chairs and swings. I feel like every theme park needs a good frontier land town. I think it's got to be like the most common theme is like the Old West. Yes. Especially in Europe. I feel like in Europe there's a million of them. Over here on the left, that's another one of the older roller coasters here at the park. The Cedar Creek Mine Ride. Um, it's not great. <laughs> These trains are uh, not very comfortable. They definitely uh, don't work well with adults. No. They uh, do have an animatronic going. Yeah, right before the end, they do have an animatronic now, so that's that's a plus. A giant plus. Mm -hmm. You've All got the reason why I go on it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, do you know what? Also, if you're at Cedar Point on a busy day, normally mine ride does not have a long line. Yeah, that's a good good. A couple of stores over here on the right. Yeah, but mine ride, not, not a comfortable ride. No, no. But it's a good ride with no line. Also, one of the ones that's good for little kids. Yeah. A good starter ride. Mm -hmm. Like this tranquil area over here. Normally there's some like geese and stuff over here, but not today. Maybe on the other side. Um, that bridge used to be used by an old antique car ride over here. When they got rid of the antique car ride, they kept the bridge, which I thought was nice. That is nice. And the fountain just turned on. <laughs> they were like, oh, they're filming. <laughs> yep, uh, turn it on. Cedar Creek Mine Ride, that's where you would enter the Cedar Creek Mine Ride. A couple things over here on the right is uh, one of my favorite restaurants at Cedar Point. It's so good. It's really I believe good. it's the, the Farmhouse Grill. Mm -hmm. And that we, we have the dining plan today. That's where we got our first meal of the day. Really good, like steak and potatoes. Very
very, very tasty. They also have a stage out here for bands and an outdoor bar. It definitely always smells good too. Yeah. And they have a lot of different options. I'm always debating on what to get. You like the steak though. I like the steak, but they have like a jalapeno sausage that looks that's, really good. That's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Moving along over here, this yellow building, that is now a restrooms. That used to be the entrance to the Frontier Sky Ride. They would take you up towards the front of the park. And then uh, a fun ride. I like Skyhawk Sky a lot. Yeah, with swings. Yep. They're like intense swings. Very intense swings. I think out of all the flat rides here at Cedar Point, this one is my favorite. Also, I feel like I feel like it's kind of in a weird section of the park, so the lines for it don't get very bad. It's definitely a good ride, a uh, flat ride, if you don't like spinning flat rides. Yes. Because I'm not a huge spinner. I get dizzy with spinning rides, and this one, it's a good ride. Wild. It is. And you get really high. It is another one that's over 100 feet tall. <laughs> right now we're gonna go a spot at Cedar Point that kind of bumps me out, Molly. This building here for years was home to the Town Hall Museum, which had a collection of just weird stuff like Cedar Point stuff, actual museum -y stuff. And the park announced that for the 150th in 2020, they were going through, we had a big budget to make it all a giant, wonderful, brand new, shiny Cedar Point uh, Museum. Well, unfortunately, as you know, some things went down in 2020 and well, <laughs> they- uh, They cut that? They cut that and they haven't brought it back yet. It was always fun looking in that building. Yeah, and, seeing what they and were also doing. you get into the air conditioning out of the heat. Yeah. I remember they once had like a bottle, like a, I forgot. It was like a a steel vengeance. Steel vengeance. Yeah. Here is the outdoor area where you can see the, uh, they do have that bar. And they have swings and more classic swings. Yes. Not the intense swings. No, these um, definitely have not opened for the season yet. No, no. But again, you know, the park's been open for all of one week. I'm, yeah. I was coming in expecting everything to be ready. But you know what? You are on a park in an operating day, so if you're on your once in a lifetime trip to Cedar Point, you would expect everything to be operating. That building here, I think it used to be home to a carousel and is now used for a Halloween haunt. Okay. It was kind of a freak showy, circusy Ripley's Museum haunt. It was pretty good. I didn't know that used to be a carousel. I believe so. Well, if you look at the building. Yeah, it makes sense. Yep. Uh, something Cedar Point did this year, they got rid of Chick-fil-A and brought back the Frontier Inn. Oh. I always think it doesn't make any sense. One of your busiest days of the week is Sunday at a theme park. Why would you bring in a third party restaurant that won't operate on Sunday? Yeah, no, I agree. I do love this uh, throwback to history over here. You can see the Q building for Maverick, which does get one of the longer lines in the park. But this building used to be home to the Whitewater Landing and which was a log flume ride. And you can still sort of see that on the roof. You could also, when you're in the queue for it, you could see Port of the Trough for Whitewater Landing. And that is the Maverick Exit Gift Shop. And, and when Molly was talking about the smells, you could see the smoke in the air. <laughs> it smells And so you're getting good. those smells. And again, you can also see this another one that has that one of those live bands. So while we might not be getting like the big theater shows at Cedar Point, they do still have some entertainment. Looks like these bands play uh, six times a day, which is pretty impressive. That is. Yeah. Good thing about that bar there, they have Elysian Space Dust IPA on draft. That's a good beer. Oh, it's a good beer. And also, you know, this is Cedar Point. You're spending $15 for a beer, <laughs> which never feels good. But Elysian Space Dust is like a 9% ABV beer. So if you want to buy one beer and feel it, that big 22 ounce for 15 bucks, well, you might. <laughs> better than your Bud Light. Indeed. Oh. That's gonna be the whole queue for Maverick. Does not look that bad today. Like it's that not, is- no. No, that's probably a 30 to 40 minute line. For, for Maverick, it's not too bad. And unfortunately, no big, oh, there, nope, they are. There's a big Canadian goose over there. Oh yeah, laying down. In case you can tell, I really like animals, so always find that neat. <laughs> uh, Maverick's good. I, I really like the Maverick roller coaster. A couple things over there in Frontier Down, Coca-Cola Freestay Hill, and a Build-A-Bear. Now Maverick is one of the more popular rides here, right? Yes, and with only 12 people per train, 
it does tend to get one of the longer lines. I also think it's one of the better roller coasters at this park. Yeah. I, Did it change the collar, like the restraints? Yeah, a number of years ago, now it's softer than it used to be when it first opened. And it's an interesting ride. It's not overly tall. I, I think it goes to max 70 miles an hour. It doesn't even hit 100 feet. But lots of cool airtime moments, quick shifts left and right. Uh, two different, there's a uh, launch in the middle of it. The dispatch today has not been that great. No. Though. But it's a really good ride. Oh, absolutely. That's one, if you're coming to Cedar Point, you, you've got to do it. Yeah. And I also like the, just the logo. Oh, there I go. Yeah, with the horse. With the horse. Right, you can see Steel Vengeance over there, getting ready to go down the big first drop. And Steel Vengeance is all the way at the back of Cedar Point. So if you kind of think of it from where we started, where the 150th sign was, the back, well, Steel Vengeance. <laughs> it's a walk if you're mm -hmm. from, uh, if this is the first ride that you want to hit. Yep. But it does get one of the longest lines. Absolutely. A couple other things over here. You do have an old timey saloon with saloon doors where you can go in and get beers. They do have a couple nice draft beers in there. And my favorite show venue at Cedar Point is the Palace Theater, Lusty Lills. They do like an old timey saloon show. I think they change it up every year. And then once you get to Halloween, they'll do a different show. And uh, if I'm going to Cedar Point and I only get to see one show, that is, that's easily the one I want to do. It's a fun show. Yep, and they, they change it all the time. Again, if you wanted to go straight, you would go to Steel Vengeance, the world's greatest roller coaster. <laughs> uh, Steel Vengeance is interesting. One thing that's different with that, you do have to put your stuff in a locker that is in the middle of the queue. Yes. If you have a bag, you've got to pay for it before you go in the queue. But your cell phones and stuff, halfway through the, about right towards, before, before you get on the train, you'll um, put your stuff in a small locker, a double-sided locker, that's free. But I do like how you now can keep your phones in the majority of the line. Yes. Of course, there's a Steel Vengeance shop as well. Not open today. It, I think it is open now. It is open now, okay. Yep. Get some uh, more views of Maverick over here on the left. And you go through kind of like water features. Yeah. That you can't see from, uh, the midway. And boarding right here, this is the Cedar Point and Lake Erie Railroad. There are two stops to this one. One's gonna be over by Millennium Force. The other one will be right here. And this is the one you wanna do. If you're only gonna go one way, you've gotta get on the train right here because this takes you through Boneville, a world of uh, animatronic skeletons doing shenanigans. Yep. And uh, it's one of my favorite parts of Cedar Point. It's a hidden gem, I feel like. I think so. And, and some people say like, oh, Cedar Point's got no charm or stuff like that. No, like, you, you must not have been on the Boneville train. Yeah. All right, so that'll do it. We're kind of at a dead end. I'm gonna pick this back up over by those swing rides that weren't operating. Took a little break there to uh, rest my arm, rest my voice. Went for a ride on Skyhawk, which is a little bit more terrifying than I remember it. <laughs> when you're up that high looking straight down, man, that's frightening. You are directly above people. Yeah. Also love that there's just more bands over here in the park. Uh, there was one out in the back in Frontier Town by the saloon. One over here by the farmhouse. And we also grabbed one of those delicious Elysian Space Dust IPAs. You need it with the talk. <laughs> I do. The second time this week I lost my voice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you said I was booing Aaron Hicks too much when we went to the Yankee you game. You did lose your voice because of booing, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's talking for, <laughs> I don't even know how long we're going here in the video, an hour plus. <laughs> All right, so we're now making our way towards the Frontier Trail. You can see Maverick. Uh, Maverick comes out of its second launch in that tunnel, goes up this hill, and it goes past that rock work. It is kind of pretty themed, Aaron. Yeah. Um, originally, when this ride was first built, there was an inversion over in that corner behind the rock. Uh, never made it to uh, guest riding it. Interesting. Yep. I do like Maverick, it's a uh, good ride. Pretty unique too. Yeah. There's not a lot of roller coasters out there like it. Yeah. Over here on the left, that is Snake River Falls, which is the big shoot the shoots ride. Now this is a very simple water ride. Um, you go up, you know, big boat with like 20 people, you go up very slowly, you go around that shed, you splash down, big giant wave. Then you walk, go on the bridge and you get soaked again. <laughs> um, this is kind of the water ride section of Cedar Point, as you do have Snake River Falls over here. And then you have their River Rapids ride over there on the right-hand side, um, which makes sense. I feel like it makes sense having the two soaking water rides right next to each other so you can ride one and then get in line for the other. Yep, and then dry off. 
Yes. Or go home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you're conveniently in the all the way in the back of the park. <laughs> Great view of Millennium Force back here. Now you do have some interesting stuff. Once you get to the Frontier Trail, it, um, Cedar Point kind of changes a bit from this giant roller coaster mecca to uh, Dollywood? Yeah. Um, this is pretty cool. This is the glass blowing area. They'll have an area out there where you can watch the artisans at work as they, they you know, do their art. And then- You can buy it. You can buy it. I, I do like this section. It's very different. Uh, it's very peaceful too. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll normally have some really cool like atmospheric music like bluegrass versions of pop songs i think at least that's what's been on here in the past i'm not sure if that'll be here this time this is the first time on this trip we've been down the frontier trail and over here on the right that will be the entrance to thunder canyon the park's river rapids ride another one that is a very soaking experience i've never done either one you know you're not missing much <laughs> We don't like uh, water rides that much. No. I don't like getting my shoes wet. If yeah. my shoes can get wet, no thank you. No. Log flumes, I'm fine with. Yeah. Um, one cool thing with Thunder Canyon, during Halloween time, they changed that into a haunted attraction called Corn Stalkers. Oh, yeah. And it's horrifying. It is terrifying. It's dark, there's corn everywhere, and man, it's, it's pretty frightening. It's a good, it's a good use of space. Yes. Uh, coming up on one of my favorite, another part of the Cedar Point I really enjoy. Very uh, different from the barnyard. Atmosphere. This is the petting zoo area. And uh, they've got a bunch of different types of animals. You can see chickens, some small mules. Churro. That's, that's, that's who I was leading up to. <laughs> the star of the show here at the barnyard. The barnyard will operate from noon till six every day. And it is home to Churro. Churro was born last year and is Cedar Point's baby alpaca. And there he is. Look how cute little Churro is. Aw, Churro. He's so adorable. He is. And he's fluffy. Oh, no, my goodness. How many theme parks have like a petting zoo area? Oh, quite a few. Yeah? Um, this one has uh, more animals than most. And Churro. Oh, he's so adorable. You just want to cuddle with him. Yeah, can we take him home? I don't think he'll fit on uh, in my Frontier Airlines bag. We can try. You can buy uh, food to feed the animals for $5. And there is an area over here you could go in where there are goats and sheep. Uh, the Petting Zoo is also home to the world's best behaved turkey. That turkey, if it wanted to wander around, it could. It, nope, it's just hanging out there being a good turkey. A couple of big cows and a chicken. Aww. Uh -huh. <laughs> it is a very different atmosphere in the front area. Yeah, with, between the, the Frontier Trail and then yeah, you come into the. Shops and then the, mm -hmm. you have the animal area. Oh, oh, look at that. There's even little rabbits. Oh, rabbits. Oh, and it looks, are you allowed to pet the rabbits? I think there's only one rabbit. Yeah, I think there's only one. Rabbits are awesome. And there's also a giant pig over there. The rabbit's cool, I mean, but Churro's still my favorite. Can't beat Churro. He's and so that little. name too. Like, perfect name. Churro is a perfect name for uh, a theme park. Animal. Yeah. A couple of really cool ducks. <laughs> and a couple of llamas as well. The llamas are a, a bigger uh, relative of the alpaca. And then uh, I believe the largest resident of the barnyard the camels. I love how the camels just like waiting for Wait, one of the trains. <laughs> it probably gets a nice off. breeze. Yeah, no, definitely. That one, this one over here is uh No, he's like Yeah, he's scratches. right up there with the people. I also like how there's just random stuff everywhere. We're up oh, there's another pen for goats and sheep. Oh, look at the camel. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> 
a friendly sheep. You look like you're probably soft. Are you so? Oh, you're very soft. They're good boys. Look at them. Come back here. Okay, so gonna move on to a couple other things. Um, I, I think I said earlier there's only one upcharge ride at Cedar Point. Well, I lied, because there are two. Over here you can see Professor Delbert's Frontier Fling, which you ride in a harness, you pull a ripcord, and then you swing. Do you know how much that is? Uh, I think it's around 15 or 20 dollars per person as well. Okay, that's not a bad price. And before we head down the Frontier Trail, I do want to mention, this is where you used to enter the Forbidden Frontier on Adventure Island. Um, that is an attraction that has permanently closed. Uh, for some reason, the sign is still there, which is weird. They, they took the sign, uh, the sign's still there. So the, the um, uh, that's an attraction I actually never did at Cedar Point. Um, it was kind of a mix between playground equipment, a petting zoo, and then an interactive all day story. That's interesting. That's yeah, it, it, it was kind of like Ghost Towns Alive, mm -hmm. but probably not the same. There is a uh, candle store over there. A great photo op. And more uh, stores. Yeah, it doesn't look like any of these stores are operating yet. Or no. No, the, the mining one. Yes. But the... Uh, Our favorite one is not. Is not, no. Is the wood carving. I hope he's still here. So yeah, not, not a lot of these are operating yet. Um, for years and years and years, that has been home to the uh, the wood carver. Yeah, that makes really good wood carving like ornaments. Or, and yeah, and like Cedar Point unique stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that it's still there and it's just coming back a later time. It's it's alarming that it's you know not not there right now. <laughs> but we're not here usually this early in the season. No, no. There's the mining company over there. A little bit of an update for you. Uh, Paul the woodcarver, he is still here, but they have moved the wood carving area from that store over there into this larger one that's also where the candles are. So, still here, still some that's really great. cool stuff. Yeah. I love the wood carved ornaments. And then some of the other work in there, like it was a really cool, like kind of like a head of a carousel horse, and uh, the dragon was awesome. The dragon was really cool. I was, wor I was worried there for a second. Yeah, no, I love how he has different stuff every season. season and yeah, and they, like the uh, the, kind of the more art pieces that he gets to work on. We're here on the left is Fort Sandusky, really kind of used for nothing. In like Halloween time, I think they do like storytelling shows over yeah, there. Yeah, like kids mm -hmm. stuff. I think kids games too. Yeah. A couple other small stores. There's a sign maker, a blacksmith. You also get into um, maybe the shadiest part of Cedar Point as far as like tree cover. If you are a little one, I believe it's $10 and you could go on a, uh, a pony ride. I do love how different this atmosphere is. Oh yeah. It's, it's, I don't know where else you could find this. In no, a, a and look, the horse is gonna walk right by. Oh yeah, going out for a walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Over here on the right, not operating today, that's the Trail Tavern which is going to be another bar. Um, now one of my favorite bars at Cedar Point, it is both not air conditioned and they don't have draft beer. It's more of a wine bar. Yes. So if you're a wino, yeah. that's where you go. But you can enjoy your drinks either in an old timey cottage or out here watching the horses. In the living of course. Oh. Yep. <laughs> And a, I believe this is not a real bat. No, I believe it's a speaker. Molly, you gonna open the door? Open the door. Brother, can you spare a tub? Brother, can you spare a tub? <laughs> ah, some good old poop humor here at Cedar Point. <laughs> One last view over here on the Frontier Trail. Now, if you made it this far through the video, thank you. It's uh, It's been quite... <laughs> One of the longer ones I think I filmed in a long time. It's kind of a almost one continuous shot. I'm keeping track of how many uh, steps and how many yeah. miles we walked during this. Uh, filming this one. Start to finish. Uh, one thing that I do co hope comes across in the video is how much I enjoy this park. And I, even as a park I come to at least once a year, I still enjoy. I'm always getting excited to come to Cedar Point. You do. You do. 
It's been consistent that you've come here for a long time, right? Um, also, a lot of cheap flights from Orlando to to Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, round trip on Frontier Airlines was about $50. Yeah, that's pretty cheap. So, you know, can't beat that. I do like coming here for different seasons and different Yeah, different events. events. Although their beer festival used to be amazing. Now it's way more expensive <laughs> than it's worth. Over here on the right, my, my favorite name shop at Cedar Point. Toot Sweets. <laughs> Big Millennium Force over there. We also have another drink fill station yeah. on the left. One of the larger ones too. And this has the Coke Freestyle machines. So if you like some of the, the weirder mixes you can get in there. Like uh, what's kind of like the Millennium Force Midway. You do have some. This is kind of a weirder shop here at Cedar Point. The China Shop, which is like fine jewelry and handcrafted collectibles, kind of like the shop at Cedar Point your grandma would like. Yeah. On the left is the Red Garter Saloon, another large bar and show environment. A lot of times you won't have a big stage show in there like you will have back at Lusty Lills. That's really more of a uh, definitely Band. more bands. On the right, you can see the station for Millennium Force. And there it goes. Now, for a long time, that was a, your your number one coaster, right? For a long time, from about 2000 until about 2015, 2016. Yeah. You know, it's still a ride I really enjoy. Uh, I do love that it has its own uh, music in the the station, <laughs> its own I think soundtrack. It's classic music. It, no, it's, it's, I, was, it, I think it's built just for the ride. Yeah, no, I was talking to my coworker and uh, she started singing the music when I said I was going to Cedar Point. Yep. <laughs> and it, it, it is, it's one of those things you think about, uh, that one and then obviously not anymore, but uh, uh, Baby I'm Ready to Go, a top-thrill dragster. Yeah. Very much in that same vein. One thing I'm sad, they used to have a Great Lakes Brewing beer truck right here last season. This year they don't. Maybe it's coming back, maybe? I hope so. It's kind of empty right there, right now. It is. More games. Uh huh. More of your traditional uh, yeah. theme park games, too. Big orange roller coaster on the left. That is Rougarou. Now, Rougarou began its life as Mantis, a stand up roller coaster. Now, it got uh, a while ago, it got converted into a floorless roller coaster. I really don't think it's any better or worse than when it was Mantis. No, I agree. Um, but one thing that's nice, Rougarou tends to have one of these shorter lines in the park. So if you're at the park on a busy day, you might be able to get on that one, not too bad. Unlike Millennium Force, a much better ride, currently posting a 45 minute wait. That is one of the big ones, Molly, we have not been on yet, and I, I really want to go on Millennium Force. It's a good ride. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Up here on the right is going to be a VIP area, so if you have a prestige pass, or I, I, maybe if you're on a VIP tour, you can go in there and sit down on outdoor couches. But like, you know what? Why would you pay for that when you could go to that wonderful bar and have that comfy those seat in air conditioning? Ah, uh, those seats are didn't call my name later. <laughs> <laughs> They're so comfortable. Now we're currently approaching the other train station. This one here on the right, that is the one towards the front of the park. It'll take you back towards Maverick and Steel Vengeance. This one's not as themed, right? No, but it does take you closer to the lake. So if okay. you wanted more of those lake views, also really good views of the Millennium Force roller coaster, you can get, and Maverick, really good views of Maverick on this, this route. Ah. One thing I'm bummed about, Molly. <laughs> Dragon and Refreshments, not open today. Mozzarella sticks. I know, they have mozzarella sticks on I the dining love plan. mozzarella sticks. Well. Not today. Not today. <laughs> we'll have to get the cheese on a stick, I think, somewhere. Okay. That's a plan. And this is where you'll enter Iron, For Iron Dragon. I do like how uh, unique it is. Yeah, a fun ride, very gentle. Yeah. And we're coming back to uh Yeah, we're, get, we're getting towards the end of the loop. Over here on the right, they tend to have a bunch of food trucks, which, um, you know, some of the restaurants at Cedar Point do get very long lines, as you've seen when we've been walking around. And that's, you know, people on meal deals or season pass dining or all day dining. Well, if you're not on any of that and you just want food, you'll probably get pretty good food from one of these and no wait in line. 
Over here on the left is their biggest outdoor stage. I believe during the summer they use this for like a, uh, some sort of a pep rally show during the day and a bigger nighttime show in the evening. I really liked uh, the opening ceremony for the Halloween event. Yeah, during Halloween time they had like three different shows over here. <laughs> and every 20 minutes, like one would start right after the other one finished. Yeah, they had three different stages. Yeah, that was really rotated. cool. It was really nice. I will say their Halloween event here at Cedar Point, pretty cool. I, I do like Halloween weekends. Gets very crowded. Uh, <laughs> last year we went on Thursday and Friday and it was like magical. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, very interesting. They do have, uh, of course, your school activities right now. Yeah, I mean, it's field trip Friday. And they got to try and pawn uh, Cedar Point as a uh, an educational experience too, so good field trips would come. It's the end of the year, they deserve it. Yep. <laughs> Teachers, students. But I hope you all get on your buses and go back to your middle schools and then I could go on the rides in peace. <laughs> all right, well, we're coming back to that Skyway station which means this video, it is finally almost over. If you have any questions about Cedar Point, let me know in the comments section below. Um, I said a lot of things about Cedar Point. I come here once a year, twice a year, but I don't know everything. And I know the comment section, you guys know everything. <laughs> so if I got anything wrong, please let me know nicely. <laughs> nicely, <laughs> comments. Yep, and now Molly, uh, I know you're gonna try and tab up, to show just how big Cedar Point is, while filming this video, we walked a lot. We did walk a lot, yes. Um, we walked 9,399 steps. Yep, that is a lot. Uh, so my feet, my feet are gonna feel it, my voice will feel it, but I hope you guys had fun. Thank you very much for watching, and go check out the next video.